All right, let's take a look at the third FRQ for AP Physics CENM uh, 2025. Let's see, experiment one, students are asked to use a graph to determine the resistivity row one of a circuit element that's connected to a variable power supply as shown. The circuit element is a cylindrical and has uniform resistivity. The students have access to a voltmeter, an ammeter, and a ruler. Describe a procedure for collecting data that will allow the students to use a graph to determine row one including any steps necessary to reduce experimental uncertainty. So this one's mostly pretty straightforward. Hopefully you can just see like, we're just gonna use V equals IR for the most part. And the resistance is rho L over A, okay? And then we also know V is equal to IR. So if you look at the relation, and we're gonna measure the voltage, we're gonna measure the current, and you're just gonna look at that ratio there. But we wanna plot something, right? So voltage is gonna be I times rho L over A. So if you kind of think about it as like, this is your Y variable, and then this is your X variable, then what's gonna happen is this whole thing's your slope. Okay, so we need to measure and a rule, we gotta measure some dimensions here and then use that slope, slope there. Okay, so we gotta measure, so first it's gonna measure the length and radius of the, let's see, it's a cylinder. So uh, circuit element is cylindrical, yeah, of the resistor. Then after you would do that, you are going to, um, um, let's see, you have a voltmeter. So you're going to, and a variable power supply. So you're going to turn on power supply to a voltage, we're gonna record the voltage. Um, maybe you need to, you should probably specify how you're gonna hook it up, I guess. So, uh, so maybe what we're gonna do is first, we probably wanna specify that we're going to, let's see, connect the ammeter in series with the resistor and power supply and connect the voltmeter in parallel. Maybe you can draw a diagram. If you wanna draw a diagram instead, that would be acceptable. In parallel with resistor. Okay, so then we're gonna turn on the power supply run some current through it, right? We're gonna record the voltage and record the voltage V and current I, and we wanna vary, vary the quantity, right? So we're gonna repeat with multiple voltages, okay? And then here, what you're gonna do is how you're gonna do the data collected. So you're gonna draw a line of, you're gonna plot um, the voltage versus the current and draw a line of best fit. The slope will equal rho L over A. So uh, you, you just, so, or, which is gonna be rho L over, sorry, rho L over pi R squared. So we can solve for a row from the slope calculation. Okay, that's it. That's all you have to say. All right, experiment two, the students are asked to use a graph to determine the resistivity of a solid cylindrical resistor is made of the same material, but different lengths. So now we're gonna vary the length a bit here. The cross section of area is given by here. The students directly measure the resistance R between the ends of each resistor. Table one provides L and R for each resistor. Indicate two quantities can be measured that can be produced a straight line. So your resistance is rho L over A. And um, you know, my preference is to, I don't know, there's a lot of ways to do this. You could just plot R and L directly and then just do row over A because they're giving you the area here. So why don't we just do that? This will be my Y variable. This will be my X variable. My slope will be row over A and A is a constant value. So we're gonna just plot R versus uh, L. I'm just being lazy here because by doing this is I don't have to calculate any new values. Uh, I have to do a calculation on the slope. 
but that's fine. So vertical axis is R, which is going to be in ohms. This is going to be L, which is in meters. And this is one of those, again, they just give you any marking. So you, you just have to mark it out. And uh, rather than bore you with that, I will go ahead and do the markings and show you what I end up coming up with. Okay, so I did the markings every five. It looks like there's a 30 by 30. So I did 0 0.01 for each of the five spacings here, and then and then one for each of the spacings here. So each of these is going to be 0 0.2. So let's plot this now. L is, um, I just want to make sure I get that. Okay, so L is 0 0.01, and then R is 0 0.9. So this is 0 0.8. 0 0.9 would be halfway right there. And then 0 0.02 and 1.6. This is 1, 2, 4, 6, right there. 0 0.03 and 2.5. That is 2, 2.5. 0 0.04 and 3.2. Hopefully you have a ruler when you're doing this on paper. And then um, 0 0.05 and 4.0. And so I want to double check that I use it. I use at least half the graph. That was pretty good. So then you can draw a straight line. It goes through there. Again, if you have a straight edge, it's probably more accurate. But like, this is pretty good. This is actually a pretty linear piece of data. And then I pick far away points. That reduces the amount of error in you reading off the graph, right? So this point here is going to be 0 0.06. And the y value is going to be 4.8. And then pick something down over here. This is, looks good. This this is going to be the point zero point zero uh, eight, no zero zero eight, and the y value is going to be zero point eight. So then now we're going to calculate that line. We're going to say the slope is going to be the difference in the y values four point eight minus uh, zero point eight divided by 0 0.06 minus 0 0.008. So when I do that in my calculator and I divide that, I get about 76.9. And remember that equals row two divided by the area, which was row two divided by, what did they tell us the area was? Five times 10 to the negative six. And so row two, you're gonna multiply these two and you're going to get 3.84, 3.8 times 10 to the negative 5. Now, what are the units of this? Well, let's go, just go back to our graph, because I don't remember the units of resistivity. You could probably look that up if you want. This is ohms. This is meters. So this is ohms per meter. And then the area was meter squared. So then multiplied by meter squared, ohms per meter times meter squared is just going to be ohm meters like that. 